So you have a registered business, and of course that means you have certain legal requirements, there's certain statutory obligations, things that you have to do, like having an annual general meeting. But how am I gonna have an AGM in the middle of COVID-19, social distancing requirements and all that? Hi, I'm Kalila Reynolds and it's time for Money Moves JA brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service. Today, I have an attorney at law who's gonna walk us through it. So we're talking to Chantal Simpson, attorney at law, and Chantal is the host of Tal Talks on YouTube. She's been giving us some really good tips about how to navigate COVID-19 as a business owner, some of the statutory obligations that you may have that you are still obligated to do despite the situation. <laughs> Hi, Chantal. Hi, Kalila. How are you? I'm great. So, so first of all, what are statutory obligations? It's just legal things that you, you're supposed to do as a business owner? Right. So legislation or what people know, not, know as acts, those are statutes. And the statutory obligations could be whether in the form of an act, uh, an order, as we've been seeing under the Disaster Risk Management Act, there are several orders that have been made. So anything that flows from, I would say, an act of parliament and the subsidiary legislation that comes under those, those are statutory obligations. And what are some of those that businesses are obligated to do? Well, under the Companies Act of Jamaica, all companies are required to have an annual general meeting in, the, in each calendar year, with certain exceptions. So if you're a new company, you, are, you get, you get an 18-month grace period within which to have your first annual general meeting. And there are other obligations such as filings. So if you change a director, if you change a company secretary, if you change your registered office address, then you must notify the registrar of companies within 14 days. And you have to, so you file that with the company's office of Jamaica. Or similarly, if you were to increase your capital or if you were to allot additional shares, then you'd also have to notify the registrar. Another obligation that is very common or that all companies have to meet is the obligation to file annual returns. And all of those are statutory obligations because they come under the Companies Act of Jamaica and they still exist. How might these be affected given the times that like places are closing earlier? I'm not even sure if the company's office has the full hours. I think they're closing early as well now. So how might I still do this, still meet these obligations despite the constraint? The good thing is, that even though the company's office has reduced its office hours, as you have said, they're still open. And they're, they've also made allowances for what people can do. So they have said their opening hours have been reduced. I think it's now they go from 8.30 to 2 or 2.30. I suspect that with the latest orders that have been uh, announced, they might put, scale that back a little bit. But the fact is they're still open. For persons uh, who do not want to go into the office, there you can always utilize their bearer services, courier services. The company's office will accept documents that are filed by bearers and couriers. Additionally, the company's office has allowed for what is um, referred to as their drop box. So you drop the document in the box with your check and when at the appropriate time or when the office opens, a representative will go through the box and will file the document accordingly. Another mm -hmm. good thing is that the company's office has a website. You can't necessarily file the documents or the annual returns, etc., on the website, but you can get information about a company on the website. You can get a copy of any document that you might need just by paying either a cost of $50 or $100, depending on the document that you want or the information that you want. But I did notice, because I watched your YouTube video, and I noticed that mm -hmm. there is a, a lag time, a delay, that if you use that Dropbox, it doesn't get recognized immediately. Tell me about right. that. Right. Well, that's because, as I said, you know, you might drop the box, you might drop the documents in the box today. And it's, the fact is, it's the same people that are coming in and serving customers in the day that are also going to be going through the drop box to ensure that documents are filed. So the company's office allows for what they call like a two day grace period. Let's say you drop the document in the box today, it's deemed to be filed two days afterwards. So that's definitely something to bear in mind if you have a time period or a time limit within which to file a document. Because as you know, as I said, changes yeah, must be filed within 14 days or there's a penalty and annual returns also must be filed within 28 days of the due date. 
Mm -hmm. Don't wait until the last minute. No. <laughs> if you wait until right. the day of the deadline and you're using the Dropbox, yeah. you're going to be considered late. So, Chantal, another or big what one. You could, Go ahead. Or what you could do is if you know that, you know, you're filing a document late, just ensure that the cost or whatever it will cost you to file it as if it were late is included in the check that you've put in the Dropbox. Mm, I see. Okay. So another big one is AGMs, annual general meetings. And those right. have been, uh, you know, when you go on the JSC's website and the news section, you keep seeing yeah. that we're postponing our AGM, we're postponing our AGM. And for good reason, yeah. because large right. crowds of people tend to gather. And this is an era yeah. of social distancing. So how Definitely. can we overcome this? Because there's a legal requirement to have AGM, your AGM within a stipulated time. All right. So, I mean, it's really going to come down to the one, the company's articles of incorporation and two, the company shareholders. I, I, from, what, from my observation, the company secretaries of most of these companies, they're aware of the nature of their shareholders and what their shareholders will accept. But in looking at the, their articles of incorporation, they, they could look at what is the quorum that is required for meetings. And quorum refers to the minimum number of persons that must be present at a meeting in order for business of the meeting to proceed. So they could pay attention to what the quorum is and make arrangements around that. One of the things that they could do to encourage persons to not attend the meeting is to designate maybe three, four persons, depending on what their quorum is, as proxies for shareholders and the on the proxy form which it has to be included with every notice of general meeting um, by virtue of law the proxy could designate in order in addition to designating uh, one of the persons that the company has said should be the proxy or is available to serve as proxy they could also they should also list the resolutions that will be considered at the meeting and allow the shareholder to on the proxy form indicate how that proxy should vote. Another thing is the, the concept of electronic meetings. So the reality is as yeah, much as you could, do moving, a, you could do a Zoom <laughs> meeting like what we're doing right now. Technically yes and, and no. So on one hand I no. <laughs> I <laughs> on one hand I don't I think there's nothing wrong with or I don't think there should be any barrier to someone having access to a Zoom meeting. So the annual general meeting is happening and they can see and hear what's happening. However, if their articles of incorporation do not provide for participation at the meeting, then that shareholder technically could not vote at the meeting and also would not be considered present at the meeting if the articles don't allow for such attendance and participation. So oh. that is the restriction there. Should businesses then be considered amending their articles of association if that is a clause in there, or at least reviewing them to see how, how they might be able to, to make this change? Definitely, but the the situation I think most of them are going to find themselves in is a catch-22 because in order to amend your articles of incorporation, you need what is referred to as a special resolution. Oh. And a special resolution is passed at a general meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it would have had to be the articles no in order to allow them to go ahead and have the meetings now, which is why I suggest you know, having, have them designate a proxy, but still allow them to see the meeting. So, so just have video link, but they can't speak per se, or they won't be counted in attendance at the meeting, but their proxy will, will vote on their behalf and be present on their behalf. Another thing I think- So the definitely proxy has help. to be there in person? Yes. Yes. Oh, but this is social right. distancing now. We're not supposed to be gathering in, in groups. But it's, Let's put it another way. One person could serve as a proxy for up to 50, 20. It doesn't matter. There's no limit on the number I of see. persons that one. Right. So if you designate three or four persons, each of those persons would probably be a proxy for, I don't know, a thousand persons. I don't know how many members these companies have, but there's no limit on how many proxies um, one individual can hold. Okay. So, hmm. Now I'm trying to figure out how do I, as a shareholder, approach this? Is it that the business is going to recommend the proxy, the person who's going to be the proxy, or you as shareholders come together somehow and designate your own proxy? How, how do I you think do this? 
I know for a fact that companies have been themselves looking at how best to do it. And I think that would probably be the best approach because more than likely the directors would be present at the meeting. So they could appoint the directors as the, as the proxy. They could, depending on the type of company, if they feel more comfortable appointing another shareholder to hold a proxy, then that could definitely be a thing. So I think it really comes down to that. And I think that's why I started with, it's on one hand, it's what the articles provide, but on the other hand, it's really what the shareholders feel comfortable with. And as I said, I think these companies are, they know their shareholders to a large extent and they know what it is that they would want. And there are also channels to engage the shareholders. A lot of shareholders have access to their companies by, by email and a lot of them have numbers that directly to the registrar agent or the company secretary and then so that there are lines of communication so that something can be worked out to find the best solution mm -hmm. so what happens now if this whole situation is just dragged out for an extraordinary <laughs> long time and mm -hmm. you haven't been able to sort out how you're going to do the proxy or you're going to use Zoom or, or however that works and mm -hmm. you end up missing the deadline to hold your AGM. What would happen in that situation? Well, one on one hand, um, a member of the company could actually requisition the minister, and in this case is the minister of my minister of MICA, to give directions as to the calling of the meeting. And the good thing I think about this particular provision is that the minister has some form of latitude, I would say in the directions that he can give. So he can, he can say that your one person is a proxy. He could say that the articles don't provide for electronic attendance at meetings, but for the purpose of this meeting, I'm given a direction that participate, attending by phone even could be counted as participation and attendance at the meeting. Um, worst case scenario, I mean, the act provides a penalty for not having it, which is about, which is $50,000, a maximum of $50,000 that is payable on summary conviction. But there is a very nice disclaimer on the Companies Act that says, you know, if it's not willful disobedience of the act, then that is definitely something that the resident magistrate should look at when uh, levying a penalty or finding someone for non-compliance with the act. So I could see if there were, for whatever reason, someone were to bring a case against a company or directors of the company for failure to have an AGM, I definitely think in the circumstances, no reasonable judge would be too unreasonable in, this, in those circumstances. Are there any other statutory obligations that we should be aware of that might be affected by the situation? The one that comes to mind is the obligation to maintain registers. So all companies are required to maintain the register of debenture holders, the register of charges, members, that's so that's their shareholders, and that would include their beneficial owners, as well as their directors. The, all the registers should be available for inspection. Most companies have in their articles a provision that allows for suspending the time for reviewing the or inspecting the registers. I think it's up to uh, two weeks or two months, depending on what the articles say. But the fact is it can't, be, it can't be indefinite. So in the circumstances, I would definitely recommend, I mean, being in the digital age that we are, that those registers are maintained electronically. Uh, you could have a Google document prepared with those registers. And if someone were to request to view those registers, you could send them the link, you could restrict their access after a time. You could also restrict what they can do with it if they can make any changes, that which you definitely don't want, or if they can download the document. In most cases, in order to view the register of a company, they're entitled to charge you a fee. So that would also help them to manage whether persons pay the fee to view the register. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for these tips, Chantal. You've been very useful, very helpful in these trying times. No problem. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's business advisory service. Check out their website, eximbankja.com. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Stay safe.